Good morning. Welcome to St. Brandon Lake Parish Community. A special welcome to any visitors who are joining us today. Today we'll celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There is Eucharistic Adoration this Monday. Thursday in Alcott, there will be Blessed Mother Mary Novena at 6 p.m., followed by the book discussion group. Registration is open for faith formation classes. Classes begin today at 9.15 in Newfane. This is the last weekend to sign up for the Habitat for Humanity built in Niagara Falls on Saturday, September 30th. Please sign up for a morning or afternoon shift in the back of the church. Today after Mass, the Knights of Columbus will be selling tickets for their spaghetti dinner, which is Saturday, October 21st at All Saints in Lockport. They're $12 pre-sale. You can get it after Mass in the vestibule. Our celebrant today is Father Andrew Loricella and Deacon Howard Morant. Now, please rise. And join in on opening hymn number 744, and we'll be doing verses 1 and 4. Number 744. Before we officially begin our Mass today, we have a very special presentation. We know that uh, our beloved friend, you know, Deacon Jim, you know, did so many things, touched so many lives, and it just happened to be that around the time when we celebrated his new life, his going home and remembered very fondly all that he's done for us, it was time for us to get a new gospel book. We thought it would be a great idea to dedicate the new gospel book to him in his honor and his memory. Not only do deacons have the job of preaching the gospel, but I think we would all agree, any of us who knew Jim knew that he embodied it, you know, as well as he preached it. So as Maria presents this book to us, we ask now a prayer of blessing. Blessed are you, O God, who through your Son, the mediator of the New Testament, gave us the words of the Holy Gospels. Today we bless and dedicate this new book of the Gospels in memory of your servant, Deacon James Cantella. May we be reminded of his service and dedication to serve you and your people when we hear the words proclaimed from this book. Bless this book and all of us who will hear your words that we may glorify and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. And as we know, you know, one of the many things that Deacon Jim uh, did for us was as a catechist, along with the company of his wife. And as this new year begins, we ask for God's blessing on this new year for all of our students, Meg, and all of our teachers. And we have no doubt, you know, that as we go about that work of training our young people to live the faith. We have no doubt that in the communion of saints, Jim is guiding us along and still inspiring us and making many great things happen through his inspiration. So bless you, bless your family, Jim's family, and all of us 
We know that his work here is far from over and will continue to inspire us in many great ways. Now we begin officially in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And be with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate our Lord's sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and we ask for our God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus. You are the everlasting source of mercy and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal happiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the God for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, 
so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I don't know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into the vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, 
who bore the day's daily burden in the heat, said one of them in reply. My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Before I start my homily, I would just want would say, it gives me great honor to be able to proclaim the word out of this book. And, and every time I do it here, and we'll eventually dedicate one in Olcott, I, I will be reminded of my uh, friend and colleague and, and Jim. There is a little uh, inscription in the front cover here, and it says this. This book of the Gospels is dedicated in memory of Deacon James V. Cantella as a memorial of his service to the people of St. Brendan on the Lake Church and his calling as a deacon in the service of God's people. So we'll remember him fondly when we see this book displayed here and when we hear the word spoken from it. Today's gospel parable, as we all probably know, is commonly referred to as the workers in the vineyard. For most of us, it seems about wage and money earning. And we all know each started in the vineyard at different times of the day, and in the end, all of them received the same amount of money. And the workers that worked the longest and were dedicated to the farmer and taking care of the crops that day, they were the ones that were upset at the end of the day. The real message, though, of this parable is that everyone comes to the vineyard of the Lord at different points in their lives. Some people are lifelong disciples of Jesus, and some people convert only towards the end of their lives. In the kingdom of God, we know that everyone is treated the same. And by human standards, when we hear a story such as this, perhaps we might view it as unjust. But Jesus points out to us that the reward for their long work, our long work, is heaven, and that is fair. And the only reason that others receive the same reward is because of the generosity of the owner of the vineyard who is God. It is God to do with what he pleases. As long as we have not been treated unjustly, we should have no complaints about who enters the kingdom of God, whether they've been a lifelong, faith-filled disciple of Christ, or whether they converted even on their deathbed. The kingdom of heaven is open to all of us. And that's exactly what we heard in our first reading from Isaiah, right? He tells us, that God's ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, and God's generosity will always be available to us. Right? Sometimes it's hard for us to get, get our grasp around what God's thoughts and means and ways are. And one could even look at this from a more contemporary point of view. Uh, this parable brings to me my, uh, issues of immigrants coming to the United States it brings to mind uh, the migrant workers, many of who work in our apple orchards locally and our, in our um, vineyards locally as well. And what's fair for them? Are they receiving a just wage? Do they have adequate housing? All the things that are just in the kingdom of God. And even with the minimum wage, I remember my children complaining about how much they were making as they kind of got through doing different um, work, whether it was at the farm down in Cambria or whether it was at a store. And I kind of reminded them what I would make as a minimum wage back in the 80s. And then that kind of quieted them down. <laughs> so these first century workers, right, they, they, their complaints were reasonable, right? Um, even if they might have been misguided in the long run. And we can see that when we look at it in hindsight. 
right? Why wouldn't those who labored more receive more and those who labored less receive less? But again, the landowner has different concept of what fairness is in the kingdom. The landowner's question near the end of the gospel says this, are you envious because I am generous? And there's a Greek translation of this uh, phrase, which literally states, is your eye evil because I am good? I don't know if that's where they got the, the evil eye uh, term from, but an evil eye suggests a deeper problem in one's life. Jesus taught in an earlier uh, section of the Gospels that the eye is the lamp of the body. So if the eye is healthy, your whole, eye, your whole body is healthy and full of life. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. And in today's parable that we heard, the evil eye was the opposite of generosity, which is what God wants us to preach, right? The opposite was jealousy, greed, and even stinginess. People didn't understand the generosity that was right in front of them the whole time. So really, the, the so-called parable of the laborers in the vineyard should be more aptly called the parable of the landowner's generosity. Right? God's generosity in our lives. How many times have we taken the opportunity to take a step back and thank God for all the good things in our lives? Right? He, yes, certainly he presents us with challenges and obstacles, but most times there is joy there is happiness, there is multitudes of generosity, and we need to be thankful for that. Jesus' parable highlights the generosity of God as the ultimate landowner. And God will use what he has always for the good of all of us. So we need to view that in, through God's eyes, through a healthy eye. So let's worry about our own journey to heaven not our neighbors, not our co-workers. Because remember, there is a great deal of work to do in the vineyard of the Lord. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God from God, made, God with the Father, are made for our salvation and down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sins, under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, in the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I the Holy Spirit, the Lord of your life, who receives the Father the Son, who is the Father the Son, who is the Lord of who is the Lord of God. I believe one holy Catholic and the Church. I confess this baptism for the forgiveness of sins, for the resurrection of the dead, for the life of the world to come. Before we pray our universal prayer. Just a few things to be mindful of. We have both a national and a world observance today. We heard about migrants, you know, in our homily and, you know, the gospel talked about the work that, uh, you know, not done exclusively by migrants, but that many of them do. Today is a world day of prayer for the migrants, you know, for all people everywhere that they may be 
able to do their work in safety, find the kind of life that God is calling them to where they could live in freedom, work, contribute their time, talent, and treasure, and receive just wages, just compensation for all that they do. And also, uh, nationally, this is Priesthood Sunday, where we remember not only to pray for our priests and their ministry, but also you know, those with the vocation to priesthood, those wrestling with that call, discerning you know, that they who are called may have the confidence and the help that they need to answer that call. If we can keep that in mind as we now bring all of our prayers together and present humbly our petitions. For the church, that the parable of the laborers in the vineyard may remind us of our obligation to welcome everyone as we work to build the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who employ others, that they may pay a just and living wage to all who work for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants and refugees who have come to our country for safety, for opportunity, and for a better life, that they may all be welcomed in this country that we call home, let us pray to the Lord. For our Jewish brothers and sisters who on Monday observe Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, focused on repentance and atonement, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, especially in the Diocese of Buffalo, let us pray to the Lord. For those struggling with illnesses and recovering from surgeries, especially Tom, abusing, and those listed in the bulletin, that our Blessed Mother may comfort, console, and help them to find inner joy amid their challenges. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithfully departed, that the Good Shepherd may welcome them into the peace of heaven, and especially for Frank Larkin, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here today and for our prayers and the intentions that we bring before the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are our needs and petitions that we bring before you today. We ask that you grant them through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in our hymn during the offertory, number 556, Canticle of the Turning. Number 556.
voice which holds us bound. To this fear and rod can be crushed by God, who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you will bring the new words of your justice burst. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not the word of me, that she should enter my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. Please join in our hymn during the communion, number 638, I Has Not Seen, number 638. Oh! 
songs with saints and drums, yet ever knew the music brings to Jesus living song of God. I have not seen, ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love Him. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, special prayers and blessings for all of our catechists and our students who are now back in session. And again, you know, we are sure of Deacon Jim's continued presence and continued support and you know we're sure that it will continue to be fruitful and we thank Deacon Howard for all of the support and friendship that he was to him and you know for helping today's uh, dedication. Um, one thing I'm sure that there aren't going to be any glitches I'm sure we could announce this pretty confidently about our blessing of the animals it will be in this upcoming bulletin but for St. Francis of Assisi um, every parish is going to have a time, but we're looking on Saturday, October 7th to have that here at St. Brendan's, here at the Newfane site at 1 o'clock. If any of you have uh, animals, pets that you'd like to have blessed, but, uh, you know, more, that'll be confirmed in the bulletin to come. But also, if you've, as you've seen and as you've heard, members of our Knights of Columbus, we know uh, Deacon Jim was also part of our local chapter. They do a lot of good work in our community, and they're having a spaghetti dinner uh, fundraiser coming up. We have some uh, members selling tickets uh, here in the church. You know, please consider that opportunity to support them. If your schedule doesn't permit, you know, if you're busy on that day, you're still welcome to buy a ticket, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, very good. We know they're, we're grateful for all that they do. But um, may all that we've done, celebrated today, nourish us to continue going forth and doing God's work. And may all athletes be safe today as well. <laughs> may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. And join in our closing hymn, number 522, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 522.
Yeah. Oh, jeez. Well, that's, that's what gets harder as you get older. If you have pets, they get under pain, you know. And like somebody that I... Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody was saying to me, oh, somebody, uh, a friend of mine said I should get a cat. And I said, you said, you're not standing on your feet. Don't get a cat. Because cats like to rub up against you. They go dashing by. And if you're not ready for it, you're going to fall. Yeah. I mean, you got the federal alarm. I don't think that.